I am so behind on these recent reads videos. 36 through 40 are the books that I'm going to talk about today, but there are already another five books that I have read that are not in this video that I also need to talk about. Expect another recent reads video very soon, but I say very soon as in who knows, a couple days from now, weeks from now, months, years, not months or years, but like it'll be a little bit. The first book I have is With Malice by Eileen Cook. I did a book review for this book, so I don't really want to talk about the book in this video because there's a book review. So if you're interested, you can find that link in the description. It'll take you to the book review. You can watch that and then you will know all about this book. It's a young adult psychological thriller. The next book I read is The Ghost in the Noonday Sun by Sid. I'm not gonna say the last name because the last time I butchered it. That's the last name. I, I don't know if you can see that. 14 year old Oliver Finch dreams of a life out at sea, living a life of adventure like his father who is a sailor. But sadly he is held back by the aunt that he lives with. She wants him and the sea to have nothing to do with one another. Nothing. But then a pirate. This pirate kidnaps him. In this book it's believed that if you're born at the strike of midnight then you have the gift of seeing the undead, the ghosts, the not living. Because Oliver was born at the strike of midnight, this pirate kidnaps Oliver because he wants to use Oliver to find a treasure. Of course a treasure. What else would it be? We then follow Oliver's crazy adventure as he's forced to help these pirates find this treasure. This book was a really fast read. It's really small. It is middle grade, but it's filled with adventure. It has so much humor in it. I found myself laughing to myself quite a bit and it had quite a lot of plot twists that I wasn't expecting. The way that I thought the book was going to go just took a 180 and really surprised me at the end. I wasn't expecting what happened to happen, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really liked our main character Oliver. He was really smart and clever and witty. My only gripe with this book is probably the title. It's called The Ghost in the Noonday Sun and I just, you you think it's gonna be about a ghost and while it is, it doesn't really focus on that per se as much as it's more of a coming of age story, which I didn't mind. I just, it had me thinking otherwise. But overall I really enjoyed this book. If you have read Treasure Island and enjoyed that book, you would really like this or if you like pirates because pirates are cool so check this out the next book i read is windblown by stephen messer this book is all about kites so if you like kites this book is for you sort of kind of well i mean it's very much so different never mind oliver another oliver isn't that funny our main character wants to be a champion kite smith he wants to build the best kites and win all of the kite championships that you can win with his kites. The downside to this though is that he's probably the worst kite maker in the history of ever. Poor kid. When Oliver goes to his great uncle Gilbert for kite advice, he has no idea what he has in store for him. He isn't expecting to be attacked by a group of evil flying kites that are alive. These evil kites, they just start attacking him from all different directions. And he's most definitely not expecting to see his great uncle Gilbert disappear into thin air right before his eyes. And to add on that, he's also not expecting this special red kite that his uncle built to carry him away to other worlds similar to his yet so very different. He didn't expect to find out that all of these worlds are slowly dying and his world as well. He is told that he's pretty much the only hope in saving all of these said worlds. This book is so short. It's barely 200 and something pages. So much happens in this book. I'm still wondering after reading this book weeks ago how the author was able to pack so much into such a small book. So much happens. How did he do it? How did he do it? I don't know. This book feels really layered, especially with all of the worlds that are thrown in this book. Each one is so unique. I felt as if all of the characters in this book, no matter how small, were there for a purpose. And when you see all of these characters and events connect in the end, it just, it feels so complete 
in a way. Everything felt so well developed, whether that's the world, the characters, the writing, all of it was so developed so well that when it ended, this book didn't feel as if it was missing anything. It didn't feel as if this book needed to continue into a series. This is just a single novel, but it felt really complete. And I really liked how this author was able to tell this giant story in such a small book. I, 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 I applaud you, author. I have read quite a bit of middle grade, and I honestly haven't read anything like this. This book felt really unique, and I highly enjoyed this book. And if you're a fan of middle grade, you should check this out. Yes, you should. The next book I read is Holes by Lewis Satcher. This was a reread for me. I've read this book multiple times, but I buddy read this with Sue from the Restricted section and Sam and Amber from the Drunken Library. I will leave their links down below. They're all freaking awesome. If you haven't read Holes, you should go do that. Now, go. Go, go read the book. I can wait. I'll wait here, it's fine. Okay, I'm not gonna wait that long, but go read the book, okay? Our main character, Stanley Yelnats, is falsely accused of stealing. A bad case of being at the wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing. He's given two options, Camp Green Lake or jail. Camp Green Lake it is. The motto of this camp is, if you take a bad boy and make him dig a hole in the ground every day in the hot sun, it will turn him into a good boy. Or so they say. I mean... Yeah. This book is wonderful. Everything about this book is just wonderful. I can't tell you enough how wonderful it is. I had the biggest crush on Zero, movie Zero, as a kid. The biggest crush. The humor in this book is spot on. You will laugh quite a bit, probably. The friendship between Stanley and Zero in this book is adorable, and I love it. This book has a lot to do with destiny and curses, and the way everything is revealed in this book and how it comes together is done masterfully. I just... It's, I can't I can't really say a lot of bad things about this book because this is one of my staple childhood books growing up The only thing I can think of that you might not like about this book is that while reading it You might get thirsty because it takes place at a camp where it's hot all the time. and There's no water So you might get thirsty and if that doesn't sound good to you. I don't know just read this book, okay? The last book I'm going to talk about today is The Book of Speculation by Erica Siller. Our main character, Simon Watson, a young librarian, lives alone in his family home that's perched on the edge of a cliff that is slowly crumbling into the sea. Both of his parents are dead. His mother drowned in the waters right in front of his house. He has a sister, but she rarely visits. Simon just recently got laid off from his job at the library, and that sucks. And he is just down in the dumps, but he is quick kept occupied when he sent this mysterious book in the mail. This book reveals a lot of his family history that he had no knowledge of beforehand, and this then leads him to believe that his family has a curse placed on them. The curse being that every woman in his family commits suicide by drowning themselves at a very young age. Sounds mysterious, right? Exciting even, right? That's what I thought. That's what I was hoping for. I was rooting for you, Erica. We have the same name but you let me down. The story was told in two timelines, the present and the past with all of the family history from the book. The mystery of the curse and how it came to be was honestly the only reason why I wanted to keep reading. Nothing else in this book seemed to work for me. All of the characters in this book were extremely flat and you could feel the author really trying to get you to care and to get you to like these characters, but it came off so forced and so unbelievable that it had the opposite effect. And the big mystery reveal of this book that you're just waiting for, that you're just rooting for, that you're just hoping is going to save this book, was ridiculous. It made this book as a whole feel pointless, and honestly, I tried to like this book. I really wanted to like this book. This book just felt like one of the women in the families. Just, it drowned to me. It was just, it drowned, and it's done. And I don't want to read it ever again. I'm probably going to get rid of it, because it was extremely disappointing. And those are the five books for this recent reads video. Most of the books I enjoyed, except for that last one. But that's Okay, if you read any of these books, if you have thoughts and opinions, leave a comment down below, or if you just want to talk to me, yada yada yada, uh, you know what to do. I will talk to you guys in another video. Bye!